I wanted to check in here and now that we talked about ridge soaring a little bit and what we look for there I wanted to go and work on maybe giving an introduction to what we might look for when we're looking uh, for thermic flying and there's a ton of different tools out there I'm still learning the tools so let this be known that <laughs> I'm not an amazing resource for this. I rely on a lot of other people for looking for uh, for a lot of things, but this will give you a place to start, and you can start looking and finding and dealing with um, uh, the conditions and forecasting a little bit, and when you get on site, you might see something different, and then you'll at least be able to say, okay, well, I looked for this, and I found something different, you know where can where can we refine this a little bit? So this will just give you a basic of how I use XC Skies, which is I think one of the easiest tools to use for this, and it allows you to drill into the specific things that you want to be looking for. So um, one thing that most people look for is top of usable lift, and this tool is made specifically for thermal thermal flying. Uh, so we're gonna let's let's assume that we're going to um, fly at some place like, um, let's go up here to Potato. So here's Clear Lake. And so Potato's in here. So I can zoom in on here. I know it's in here somewhere. Here we go, Snow Mountain. There's Potato Hill. Now there's two of them, so don't get confused. But let's just say we were going to forecast for Potato Hill. Now you can see, OK, there's a good top of lift. And this is where it gets confusing because this is in meters, but this is in feet. So that gets problematic if you can't do that um, conversion in your head real quick. What I like to do is switch to lift above ground. And this just tells me how far above ground I can get with any given within the day, potentially. So, and these are all different models, and they have different times that they're available to go out to. So. Um, it's it's a good thing when you see a bunch of models giving you positive AGL, positive above ground level. So uh, you can do a ton of different things in here, but I don't want to get too far into the weeds. So I just want to say you're looking for uh, lift above ground. And um, so one thing you want to do is make sure you're looking at the correct time in XC Skies. And this kind of gives you an idea. This is the peak heating right up here in about noon. And it's different in different parts of the year. It might be earlier or might be later. So right now, it's about it's gonna be right about noon. And so if I looked at, say, three o'clock, well, then that wouldn't be peak heating. That might not give me a good idea of when I might be wanting to launch. Um, and you can just look, click here and see, okay, here's how the day is developing, right? It develops like this, it does this, now it's gotten better. Okay, now it's doing this. Okay, so now we've got an idea of positive lift above ground. You can click at any point and see, okay, what, what do all of these say for it, right? Now we're looking right now on Wednesday. That's the day we're looking at right now. I already know nothing's going to be working on Wednesday because if you look at these numbers on the screen, you can see that um, the that the wind is going to be very strong from the northeast. Um, and that's just the base wind. That's not including gust. Gust you have to look at it in a different way. But that tells you that it's pretty strong. You probably don't want to be flying because that's the surface. So this other thing down here, you can click on here. Oh look, top of lift, 35 miles an hour from the north. And you can look at different levels. And this might be really good for you to do be like, okay, well, I know top of lift is going to be at 4,000 feet, right? Uh, so what's below that? Okay, well, it's 2,000 feet. Well, if it switches direction at some point, which, you know, let's assume we could go up this high, it just gets stronger and stronger, right? Um, today it looks like direction isn't switching a whole lot, but some days you'll notice at 2,000 feet the wind is from the west. And at 4,000 feet is from the east or the north or something. So 
that could be something to watch out for. It might tell you how turbulent a day is. So you want to make sure that there's a base wind that's pretty low um, and you want to make sure that that base wind throughout the day is low, not just when you launch because you're gonna to have to land at some point, right? And you wanna know, what am I gonna come in to land on? Um, so that's, so we covered wind, we covered uh, top of lift. So now we're gonna talk about um, updraft velocity. And updraft velocity gives you an idea of um, how much a thermal um, how fast the thermal is going to be lifting you. So how easy it's going to be to get lift out of it. Um, so the updraft velocity, you can select that here. If you hover over each of these, it'll tell you what it is. And these all have some use, usefulness to them, I'm sure. I haven't dug super far into it, but you could say right here, look at the updraft velocity. So 1 to 1.6, somewhere around in there is kind of lighter. 1 is kind of lighter. Um, I think these are a little conservative. What I've found on days when it says 2.5, it sometimes turns out to be 3 or 3.5. Um, so this might be a little bit conservative here. So what I want to see, though, is something above 1.5. If it's one and a half, you know, I might go somewhere close by to get that and see, you know, try and feel out the thermals and trying to get better at the lighter thermals. Um, but if it's a day that I want to stay up for a longer period of time, around here, I'm probably not going to be super excited about that. Um, but that can be good starting off. If you see one and a half somewhere that you're wanting to go fly, then that could be good. That could be fine um, because then you're you're learning how to stay in the lighter lift. So um, that's potato. Now we've got some we've got some more complicated sites down here. I think they're more complicated in the sense that you have um, you have marine layer come in and mess with it. So let's assume you wanted to fly somewhere like at Levin, which is a place that you know you're likely to get to as a P2. So I come down here and look at Mount Hamilton. This is about the best lift, and Ed Levin's in here somewhere to the south of Mount Hamilton. And you can see we're getting 2.5 meters a second, 1.9, 1.5, 1.9. And that would be a decent day at Ed Levin if it weren't for all of this wind, right? So we could say, let's see, lift above ground. Okay, we've got some lift above ground. Um, top of usable lift it gives us an idea of where we're getting to. I know I've been to about 5,500 feet, maybe 6,000 feet over Mission before, which is right north of Mount Hamilton. So that gives me an idea of what the day might be like. The wind is crazy though. So how we so we already know we don't want to work this day. Let's go to a different day, and you'll notice these are grayed out right here. So I can't look at the forecast for HRRR for Thursday at 1 p.m. But if I search, switch to NAM3, you can see times that it goes out to. And it goes out to 1 on Thursday. And so I can look at that and say, OK, that looks better even than Wednesday. And the wind is so much lower. Um, and let's switch to this and see how the wind developed. The wind stayed light. And let's check here. OK, the wind is light. And you can click all through and make sure, okay, well, at 6,000 feet, it gets a little stronger from the north. So that might mean that it's, you know, not that great. Um, but it also might be just fine. It might, you might not get up to that point where it starts getting that, getting that, um, that higher level of wind. Oh, and look at one o'clock, that, that wind isn't there. So that means that um, we're going to have a slightly north wind here, but, um, but the thermals are probably going to overcome this on launch. Um, it may not, it may not, but it's probably going to overcome that on launch. So let's look at updraft velocity and see what it's going, what it's looking at there. That's a pretty good updraft velocity. So two and a half is definitely workable for, and definitely for something to learn you're flying to two and a half and you'll feel it and definitely be able to, to feel that. So 
Um, the thing here is that later in the day, the marine layer comes in and might kill off the thermic captivity. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of complications involved with how that works, probably, and I'm not super dialed in on what those are. I'm, I don't fly this site that much. Um, so you might ask someone, someone that flies there very frequently what that's about, but this is just an intro to, okay, let's find, let's find usable lift. Let's find, uh, updraft velocity. That's good. Let's look at the wind and make sure that the wind is good. And then, okay, let's decide, are we going to go to this site? We're going to go to mission if you're rated for that, or maybe I'm going to look even further north and look up here and see if there's something usable up here. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, potato. <laughs> there's a ton that I don't know, um, clearly, but that's, that's the basic of what you should be looking for. Probably it's low base wind, some updraft velocity that isn't crazy and, um, some lift above ground. So the updraft velocity tells you how strong the thermal is. Lift above ground tells you how tall they can get. Um, we could go a little bit further into these models here. HRR is generally considered like a really good model, but it only goes out so far, right? It only goes out to the next day and then a little bit more. Um, NAM 3, I would say, is my second favorite model. Um, and you can see it also has some limited times. But GFS is very generalized. But it goes out so far, right? It goes out several days in advance. So I can look on Saturday and say, okay, well, let's see Saturday. Maybe maybe Saturday's the day that I have available. And you can start looking at it now and see how the forecast develops. Okay, it looks like we got positive updraft. And then then look at lift above ground. Okay, well, we have some lift above ground. That looks really good. So uh, that, that's what I want to say here is like, you, you want to play with these to find which one you like better. Like, do you like GFS? Maybe you just want this general overview. And the number here is the resolution. So 24 kilometers is rather large. So it does 24 kilometer blocks. And HRR and NAM3 do three kilometer blocks. So that gives you an idea that um, HRR and NAM3 can account for smaller variations um, in, in weather. So they give you maybe more information. It could also just be, be wrong as well. But um, yeah, that's what we're, we're dealing with. We've got a bunch of models. What I like to see is a bunch of them showing good lift. Um, the more of them that show it, the better, in my opinion. Um, so yeah. If you have any questions about this, uh, shoot them over to me. This is just a general overview. And like I said, I'm not an expert in this. I'm just, I'm still learning um, and I'm trying to get a handle on it. But this is the basic tool that I use and the basic things that I look for. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Hope this was useful.